one of the most powerful things we can do with art is to add more perspective, like show something from an unusual angle or, or, or maybe talk about things in a way that other people haven't thought about. What happened? What changed your life? I don't know. Something you saw, are you an artist? Do you have a crazy dream? Then you're in exactly the right place. Because today we're talking to inspiring artists from all over the world on the Pencil Kings podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Bowler. Let's get to it. Today on the line, Ken Wong. I'm extremely happy to get to reconnect with him and bring his experience to you guys. Welcome to the call, Ken. Thank you very much, Mitch. It's awesome to catch up with you after this time. What, what is it? I'm sorry to bother you. It's a new question. To start off, why don't you tell our listeners uh, some of the projects that you've worked on recently? Sure. I'm currently working in London at a company called Us2. And we spent the past year working on uh, a game called Monument Valley, which is out now for iOS and Android. Um, In fact, as we speak, the Android version just came out a few hours ago. And the game's done done really well. I was the lead designer and also one of the artists on the project. For those of you who maybe don't play a lot of games but are really interested in art, I took my experience as a concept artist and an illustrator and really made that the focus of the game. The game is a lot about art and and visual design. And then I guess um, from an art perspective, your listeners might be most interested in a game that I finished up a few years ago called Alice Madness Returns. It's a PlayStation and Xbox and PC game based around Alice in Wonderland. We did kind of like a dark gothic take on it and uh, I was the art director of that project so I was sort of responsible for guiding a team of artists based in Shanghai, you know, recreating the world of, of Wonderland but really dark and and twisted, handling everything from the concept art to special effects to uh, animations and and level design. Awesome. Just a little anecdote. I was on a flight uh, back to Vancouver. I forget. I think I was coming from San Fran. And uh, I was sitting across from this student who was studying animation here in Vancouver at Emily Carr. You know, he asked what I was doing. And I told him, well, you know, I'm creating this art website to help train new artists. And I was telling him about my time in Shanghai, and he's just lit up. Oh, Shanghai, do you know Spicy Horse Games? I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I I got to work with those guys. I got to work with Ken and, and American. And um, for me, it was, you know, a big highlight. That The reach of that studio, even though it's all the way over in Shanghai, it's really impressive. Well, that, that's awesome to hear. Um, in my career, I've always tried to do things that stand out from the crowd and I try to work on not just the quality of my art, but to have something unique and special to say, or, or maybe just looking at um, something familiar in a, in a slightly different light. One of the most powerful things we can do with art is to add more perspective, like show something from an unusual angle, or, or, or maybe talk about things in a way that other people haven't thought about. Um, could you give us an example of that, of looking at something um, traditional in a different light, maybe in regards to Monument Valley, as that being your most recent project? Uh, sure. Well, I guess, um, like I see game design as a form of art. You know, the the ideas and the skills that I use as a storyteller uh, when I do illustrations, all of that has carried over to how I design games. And it's, it's, it's all really about, um, you know, com- the communication between our, our team as, as creators and the game players. Um, it, it works the same way that, that art does. Um, so when we talked about what Man- Monument Valley would be about, we wanted to, to, to kind of show people that games can be really meaningful and really beautiful, and, uh, but also really accessible at the same time. I mean, and this is something that, I think music and movies are are quite good at. Um, When you go to the cinema, you don't really have to have um, required knowledge. You know, the movie works hard to earn your respect, but then also to like tell a good story and and hopefully leave you with something to think about or or at least a good time. I suppose uh, a lot of mobile games in particular sort of come across as junk food, you know, or they they prey on the the addictions of, of game players. And so we wanted to um, show people that mobile games could be 
really beautiful and meaningful without without compromising how attractive it could be, like like how well we could possibly access new audiences. Could you take us back to when you were getting started? Um, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? Because the path to becoming a quote unquote successful artist is usually not that cut and dry. There's always something interesting there. So how did that path look for you? Well, I guess my perspective is that we all go through our childhood as artists and we all create art. We all doodle and, you know, learn how to use crayons and um, markers and paper mache and clay. I, I, my belief is that this is all art. It's all expression. It's all, you know, exploring ideas through, through making things. And it's only when people reach, or a lot of people, when they reach sort of teenager years that they become very self-conscious and suddenly they're like, oh, I, I don't know how to draw that or I'm not good at this. And they stop creating or they stop expressing themselves. And it's a shame because I, I do think that we are all born with this way of, of reaching out. And, and I was just one of those kids who never stopped. I always found it, uh, I don't know, I guess a, a good way to, to communicate was through drawings or, or through other visual means. And I didn't fully trust in that. I didn't really have the confidence to make that my career. Um, and so I, when I studied at university, I did a BA in multimedia studies, which is a, a form of art. But I was, you know, I was looking at stuff like Flash and making websites. And I was going to be quite content just doing production art, you know, sort of work for higher jobs. And it was during that time at university that I got my first job. I did some fan art for a game called American McGee's Alice. And the designer of that game, his name is American, uh, American McGee, he contacted me after seeing the art and he asked if I would like to do um, some designs for his new game. And I think I was about 20 years old at this time and I, I said, I, you know, I'd never done this before, but I'll give it my best shot. It sounds great. And uh, I guess he liked what he saw because we continued to work together and then he helped me get my first job at the industry. So I, I tell people that the games industry kind of chose me as opposed to me choosing the games industry. And I'm really grateful for that because some people work incredibly, incredibly hard for many years to fulfill their dreams. Whereas I uh, didn't really have the dream and I, I kind of had the dream come and find me and said, you know, are you ready for this opportunity? And then I did the hard work. That's awesome. Do you feel that you were doing anything special with your fan art? or Because um, I see a lot of people doing fan art, and I feel that it's a fantastic way to get noticed. That if you wanted to work on, say, StarCraft, for example, and all you did was create the best StarCraft art that you could, chances are that you're going to, even though there's a lot of people doing that, but chances are that if you're really good at it that those developers and those artists that work on the StarCraft team are going to take notice of your work. So do you think that there was something special about the way that you approach this? Were you promoting yourself a lot or was it more of just like a random happy accident? Um, that's, a, that's a really great question. Um, I think when it comes to getting noticed and getting hired, there's always two ways to go about it. And one is just be better than everyone else and the other way is to be different to everyone else. I think a lot of fan artists and a lot of artists, a lot of sort of amateur or beginner artists, they're trying to compete on that quality level field. Um, and that's, you know, that is an admirable goal. And, and we should always be working on our basics on, on like uh, just drawing better and, and better color theory and all that kind of stuff. But it's there's also the, it's so competitive, right? There's so many people out there that um, are working just as hard as you. To get noticed and it's if you don't have anything unique to share it's easy to get lost in the crowd if it, all you do is just kind of uh mimic the the work that you love you know like if you if you're not as good as the people who design starcraft uh, but you keep doing sort of low quality starcraft work then it's not really going to be talked about 
so the the way that you can that you can make a difference is put some of yourself in there. You know, like do what you think StarCraft uh, should be, or what you think the Lion King should be. You know, get, have a different take on it, um, spin it, um, put some of your own voice in there. That's a really good way, I think, to segue into finding your own voice in general, um, to developing your own world perspective and and your own properties you know i think the the guys at blizzard who are looking to hire artists or and this goes the same for pixar or disney or um, any other big studio they're not just looking for people who can copy the house style they're looking for world builders and and visionaries who have something to add to the company you know something they can a unique voice to add um and i my experience has always been that you you gotta have a, a good balance of both um, I want to see, like as an art director, I want to see portfolios that are really solidly drawn, but where I can see, you know, the spark of ingenuity or, or, or creativity or um, just having a, a personality, you know, everyone has something to say um, and something to add to a team. And it's a, it's a great skill. It's, it's almost magical when you can take something that you're feeling and put that into the artwork, um, when you can make that happen. I think you'll find that um, you'll always have an audience. Oh, that's so great. I love hearing that. I can think of a lot of different ways that if I wanted to break into a studio, like different things that I could do. Um, one of the things that comes to mind for Mass Effect, somebody had designed all these hoodies and they're like, you know what? I would love to see hoodies in the style of the different armors of Mass Effect. And they put together this giant picture of these hoodie drawings. And then they ended up, I believe, putting those hoodies into production. And there's so many different art jobs. You know, you might think that you want to work at Pixar, which is a dream of a lot of people. But Pixar isn't just what you see on the screen. I mean, they're designing toys. They're designing um, all kinds of marketing materials that go around that. And there's room for creative artists in all different avenues. So I'm, I'm glad that you started to draw those connections between, you know, having your own style and taking your own voice to it. Because I think it is something that a lot of people miss. Thought it was a fair gamble. Either I'd find myself or get it out of my system. One of the things that I think is really interesting is that you've gone from, let's let's say, an artist to an art director, uh, just in broad strokes, and now to a game designer. A lot of people want to become game designers, but I feel that it's this black box position that nobody really can give you a straight answer. And the people that I've met that are game designers, I feel that there's they're unique in that they consume so much media like they're always they're just this giant sponge soaking in all these different references and and putting it into their subconscious so that they can bring it back through their game design but i've never talked to anybody that was an art director first and then went to a game designer so what how did that work and what do you feel you take um going being you know so focused just on the art to now being on the game design side of things my heroes a lot, well, a lot of them are, are visual artists that turn into directors of some sort. The, an example being James Cameron. You know, James Cameron is an artist. He can still draw storyboards. And he has the ingenuity to develop technologies in order to tell the stories that he wants. Another one is Ridley Scott. Um, another one is Jim Henson. Another is Tim Burton. A big part of being an artist is not what comes out of the hand it, it's what goes into the eye it's when you consume media how you interpret that and how you internalize that the way that artists and, and other visual uh, creatives see the world it's 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 a way of understanding the world you know they take their skills and and apply it to storytelling um you know with with more responsibility they become the director of movies or they become designers on games it means that they can bring their skills of, of visual storytelling to the forefront and then perhaps emphasize that more than a focus on dialogue in movies or perhaps mechanics in games again internalizing that is really important like when i play a game i don't just consume it I dissect it and deconstruct it and I wonder why is is this fun or why is this frustrating? You know, if, if I took the, this frustrating element out, would the game be better? For me, 
I feel like all of us here at us two, we're all artists, we're all creatives, even the programmers, the, the work that they're doing is for the, the experience of the user. It's all about the storytelling. So you coming from an art director background, now as a game designer, you put the art first, or that's maybe the, the chief consideration, and then the other things fit in with the art? I would say that um, the art comes easier for me, and it it's maybe more comfortable for me to to start with art, but it has to be a holistic process. Um, everything has to be hand in hand. And I, I think um, perhaps a good way of looking at it is when you design a game, it's not a good idea to start with the mechanics and then wrap the art around that like an afterthought, like, it could, like it's a total disconnect. I think you have to consider those two things together because to the end user, it's all one and the same. When the, when the user sits down to play Mass Effect, they don't think, oh, I'm making dialogue choices and I'm, I'm, I'm shooting things. Uh, and then quite separately, I'm in this open world space universe with all these interesting characters and, and, and alien races. To them, it's all, it's all the same. It's all seamless. They, they, they go together. And, and the connective tissue is storytelling. It's all about how me as a as a creative can communicate something to you as a participant or as a viewer or a player um through this work gotcha that's awesome let's now we've talked about the present so let's go forward to the future you've just wrapped up on your game and i'm assuming there's you know there's talks about what the next thing to do is uh, you know what's interesting and exciting for you uh, going forward as an artist and you know as a game designer and, and as a human being. You know what what's exciting for you? <laughs> wow, I I guess the success of Monument Valley, uh, I, in some ways, validates some of my theories about um, how games are made and how we tell stories. Um, we took a lot of creative risks. And, and financial risks with Monument Valley. You know, we we didn't. I, I don't think we took the easy path uh, on a whole range of choices. Um, and and the fact that the game was still successful uh, means that uh, we can do anything now. You know, the the team has tremendous confidence in its ability and and in our way of working with each other. Um, so I want to. I want to stay here um, with this team longer and and see where this adventure is going to take us. And already, um, you know, we've been talking to the press and we've been invited to talk at, at several conferences and festivals and stuff about our experience making Monument Valley and, you know, why we thought that mobile games uh could be saved, as some people put it. You know, why um, we could release a premium priced, premium quality game in this market that's sort of dominated by um, Flappy Bird clones and uh, Threes clones and, and, and rather freemium games, which, which sort of treat their users like idiots or like, um, or like consumers, you know? And you know, at the same time, it's part of this larger and longer discussion about games as art. And I, I'm very passionate about art and I'm very passionate about games. And my viewpoint is that, you know, 20 years from now, we'll say, of course, games are art. Of course, look at all these amazing experiences that we've grown up with um, uh, playing through games. And, and look, at, look at what we can say and the stories that we can tell in games that you can't. In, other, in any other medium. You know, un unfortunately, a lot of critics and writers and generally old grumpy people, they, they look at the worst examples. They look at the trashiest mainstream examples of what we put out. And that's unfortunate because we don't do the same for movies. We don't look at Transformers, Dark of the Moon and say like, well, this is cinema. You know, this is the best that we can do. We, we point out... Um, you know, rarer things. And, and um, I'm looking forward to 
trying to contribute to this understanding of this new art form and trying to get the word out there that there are um, amazing works of art that, that the games industry has created. And, and I hope that um, as that gains more recognition, more people will be drawn to, to making games, uh, younger people, women, people of different backgrounds, and that will increase the diversity of the games that we make. It's, it's really a bit embarrassing and disappointing that when we go to these conferences, almost all of the speakers are middle-aged white men. I have nothing against middle-aged white men, but uh, it's a pity that we don't have that diversity of, of voices. Um, of artists out there, um, particularly females. I, I think we're making great progress here, but there's it, there's still a hard battle trying to get gamers to understand that there's so much more that we can do than just mindless violence. Right. One of the things that I always found interesting working in Asia is there's far more females who are on the the production teams. And I always thought that was kind of cool and, and something unique. I, you know, I obviously I can't speak for Japan and some of the other countries, but in China in particular, that's how it was, or that's how I found it. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I remember that, you know, we would be working together in the office and uh, like more than half of some of the, of the teams were, were female. Yeah, it was cool. Um, you mentioned the, some of the shining examples in uh, video game artwork. What are a couple of your favorites? I'm going to throw out one um, for myself that I think everybody should play, which is Shadow of the Colossus. I just loved um, the art style. I think it was only on PlayStation 2, but you know, you're this little tiny boy and you're climbing up on these giant monsters with fur. And Oh man, I was just blown away when I saw that and the style of the monsters was amazing. So what are some of your favorites and maybe some examples that you feel that, you know, if people haven't been exposing themselves to more of the artful side of video games, that they would do well to check out some of these games? Sure. I recently finally got to play um, an amazing game called Gone Home. And it's available um, on Steam uh, or for, for PCs and Macs. And it's a beautiful short game um, about a girl who comes home to her family house and her family is gone and she has to figure out what happened by just looking around the house and, and reading notes and, and kind of going through the, the history of this family. It's like one of the most moving experiences that I've had playing a game and genuinely a work of art. One of the games that has influenced me greatly as a game designer is Passage by Jason Rohrer. This game kind of awakened me to what games could be. And it's a very short game. It's You can complete it in five to 10 minutes uh, on his website. I, I, I didn't realize that you could use game mechanics to talk about death and companionship and meaning in this way. Um, so I thought that was, that was really stunning. Um, and then, to, to give a very uh, sort of obvious example, um, what I think is one of the greatest games of the past decade is Portal. And Portal is amazing because it innovates on basically every front. Um, it has unique game mechanics that don't require violence. Um, it has a really immersive, uh, really well-written story with great voice acting. Um, it's beautiful to look at. And it's just this really Im immersive world uh, with great storytelling, great puzzle designs. It's, it's really the whole package. And um, I think really ahead of its time. It was also notable because this is like about um, six years ago, the long form game really dominated the industry. Um, and by long form, I mean that games tended to cost um, about 50 US dollars and there was this expectation that they would last 10, 20, 30 hours long. Um, so if, if you can imagine that we didn't have movies and we didn't have short films or music videos or ads, that we only had TV series that were two to three series long, you know, that, that really limits the kind of stories you can tell. And at this time, Portal came out and it was shorter. It was, you can finish Portal in about three hours 
and it costs less. It costs about twenty dollars, I think, when it first was released. So, so here you had a this a bunch of creators. And by the way, the, the portal was made by a bunch of students. I know, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and Val saw these students who made this amazing graduate project, this demo. And instead of just buying the project from them, they're like, we're just going to hire all of you, you know, and, you know, they're the most respected um, PC developers. And they're just like, we're going to hire you guys out of school. And we trust that you guys are going to turn this into something really amazing. They decided to make essentially one of the, the first or, or one of the first big um, short games. That's part of the reason why Monument Valley is short, because um, in that short amount of time, we can we can keep an emotional um, cadence uh, much better. Awesome. So, Ken, why don't you tell everybody where they can find Monument Valley, where they can find you online, how they can get in touch, all your details. We want it. Sure. You can see my art and my portfolio at www.kenart.net. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Ken Wong Art. The game is at monumentvalleygame.com or at us two games. That's U S T W O games. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the game on the iOS store and now on Android. Are you guys going to hit Microsoft as well? We're still looking at it. We're figuring out the what other platforms we might bring it to. Awesome. For those of you that haven't seen the game yet, at least go check out the trailer. When you first see it, you'll make this immediate connection to these very um, beautiful and ornate drawings and then how do you maneuver your character inside them. It's really cool, especially as an artist, to see that kind of stuff. Great. Thanks. You don't understand. We saw something that changed me. That's what happens to all of us. Doesn't matter if we really see it or only imagine we do. We see something that changes us. For back episodes, show notes, and a couple of other goodies that you're going to have to find out for yourself, head on over to PencilKings.com slash podcast.